Welcome back to the My Latin Life podcast. Since 2014, My Latin Life has been your trusted guide to traveling and living in Latin America. My guest today is Bowtied Colombia. He is a Twitter personality, and this is probably one of your first podcasts ever, I'm guessing, right, man? Yes, exactly. Yes. My first podcast, sadly. First podcast. But you've been on Twitter for quite a while now. Um, I've been aware of you on Twitter for over a year. Lots of communication, lots of back and forth. Uh, you're you're doing great on Twitter. You're just shy of 10K followers. You're at 9,950 at the time of this recording. So congratulations. You, uh, you hit the big leagues. Thank you, man. You are a big uh, inspiration for me because I remember your account when I started. Mm -hmm. So you uh, has at that time, have at that time uh, at least 6K, main, 6K maybe followers. Yes, poquitos. Ya después... You, you are a big one in, in Twitter, I think. Big, big personality, too. So <laughs> thank you for, for your, your time, for, for what are you doing for Latam. It's very important for us. I am from, from Colombia. I am from Santa Marta. So I see posts that literally nobody knows that. You talk about Santa Marta, for example. Santa Marta is not... a a city that many people know. So thank you for, for your work. You know, a specific place. You the know, hidden a gems. lot of things. Yes, exactly. Hidden so gems. Uh-huh. Definitely. Um, and we'll do a little bit of Spanglish on this podcast just to help uh, Mr. Bowtide Columbia with uh, the fluidity and stuff. So, dude, feel free to just mix whenever you want or finish your sentences in Perfect. Spanish and stuff like that. Just, uh, it's all okay. good. It's, it's part of the fun. Um, and so what inspired you to create your Twitter account to get on Twitter? Was the idea to show the culture or to, you know, do a side hustle and make a side income or, uh, help, help foreigners maybe, uh, what's, what's kind of the, the larger idea. Okay. Eh, al principio, mi idea era, digamos, I started the, the account for side hustle, right? For earn a little bit income in, in dollars, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's better because I, I, at that time, Petro is going to be the president. So I, I, I have bad feelings about the economy and, and my personal situation, so... I decided, I see your account and and see, well, I, I create content, uh, personal content in Colombia, in Spanish. So mm -hmm. I see the opportunity to do that in English. My English is not so good, but I try. It, it's a process, right? I, iteration. Iteration, iteration. And later I see the opportunity to earn a little bit income, a little bit, un poquito, in dollars. Mm -hmm. Y después, right now, I see the big opportunity with that account for a lot of, of process. Not, not only business, but for example, I know that uh, polit politicians follow me from Colombia. I know uh, uh, people that want to, to do business in Colombia, that want to do business with me. And Basically, a lot of people uh, trust my opinion, for example. So, eh, es muy importante decir la verdad en, ese, en, en, mi, en mi cuenta. O sea, hablar con la verdad es demasiado importante. O sea, speak eh, truth mm -hmm. about Colombia. It's more important that earn eh, or sell anything. The most important thing... Eh, in Twitter is speak uh, with true. Mm -hmm. So right now I see the opportunity to connect with people. It's more important that to earn money. So right now yeah. uh, 
I am in the process. So, Cesar, I want to kick things off by having you explain a little bit about the cultural regions of Colombia. I think maybe a lot of people think that Colombia is one big culture, but really there's multiple cultural zones and would love to get your perspective on, on how you think about it and maybe explain to an international audience the different cultural regions of Colombia. Yeah, perfect. Uh te lo voy a explicar. Colombia es like a, a, la unión de muchos países. Es like a, it's, it's a, like a different countries in one country, I think, because it's so, so different from each region. For example, costeños, I am from Santa Marta, de los costeños, prácticamente. Mm -hmm. But even in, in Santa Marta, eh, It's different the, the culture from Barranquilla and from Cartagena, for example. Cartagena is like a, a, a little bit a elitist, elitism, a, como la élite, digamos. Uh -huh. In Cartagena. Cartagena, exactly. Okay. Uh, the, the accent is very different from Santa Marta and, all, and also so from Barranquilla. Um, Cartagena is like a two words. Is uh, a poor, poor one side from Cartagena that, that is dangerous. And in the same city, it's like a, a very luxury life with all politicians from Colombia, with the families and all of that in the same city. Cartagena is the best for, I don't know, it's not for living, but for uh, tourismo. Unos cuantos días descansar, básicamente, es mm -hmm. ideal, digamos. Eso es lo que tiene por ofrecer. Also, I want to say that have a, a lot of problems with uh, corruption and prostitution also. But I want to say that uh, from the scopolamine side, uh, it's not so dangerous. I, I don't know why, but mm. a lot of prostitution also. But uh, in, in the case of uh, Scopolamina, no es tan popular, digamos. Mm. De Cartagena, digamos, es amable. But the, the, tourist, the tourism is uh, uh, complicated because uh, there is a lot of cases that uh, people rob uh, or ask for more money than the, the, el servicio. Que ofrecen. Yeah. Like tour scams. Exactly, yes. With debit cards and also credit cards, it's better uh, always pay in cash, not, not credit ni debit. But, well, uh, that's right now from Cartagena. But Barranquilla is great for industry, for example, for uh, ports. Uh, the, the, el puerto de Barranquilla es muy famoso. Also, there, there is a family, the Los Char, uh, that's the last name of the, the family. The family mm -hmm. uh, owns the city completely. The, the team, the soccer team of Barranquilla, the Olympica, uh, but it's a great, I don't know, great administration, I, I must say, because uh, Barranquilla is like a, a great uh, city from, I don't know, right perspective in, in, politis, in politics. So the people of Barranquilla is, uh, is different from Cartagena and Santa Marta. They are kind. They have a carnival, el Carnaval de Barranquilla, mm -hmm. in February this year. And, and the people is like um, puppies. I don't know if you know the concept uh, puppies oh no, what's that puppies is like a fresa in mexico okay, okay. yeah yes in barranquilla los puppies right the yes the, the people with high class and money also santa marta is different also is ma is more like a, a for hippies for for chill for it's more for The people is more quiet, 
is more re relaxed uh, here. There, mm. there are not uh, so elitism or high class society in Santa Marta. There is not so popular, for example. I know that Santa Marta uh, mainly one family, uh, Los Vives owns a lot of business here, but here the people is more chilling. Even for example, for for restaurants, I think uh, there is an opportunity to to create uh, great restaurants in Santa Marta, for example, because uh, there are not a luxury restaurants, for example, in Barranquilla. Yes, in Cartagena, of course, but here not. Uh, mm -hmm. The people is more like uh, nature lovers mm -hmm. because they go to Minca, they go to Tayrona Park, or Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, or La Guajira también van. So Santa Marta is uh, a chill, I don't know, chill vibe. That's mm -hmm. the main difference uh, between even the, the costeños. But also, if you want to go to Medellín, the, the people of Medellín are great. Los parceros, los paisas, it, they are uh, very proud of their city, their culture of, of money. I must say that that people uh, are known in Colombia like uh, ent emprendedores, berracos is the, the word, like people that work hard than everybody in Colombia. They they are very proud of their region. And also they want to sep separate from Colombia in, in historical, for example. That's who's, a, a, who's that? Who wants to separate? Yes, yeah, I don't know. Historica, historicamente, they want to do that separate from, from Colombia. Independent. Who, who wants to separate? Uh, Medellín or the region, ah, many, uh, Antioquia. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. exactly. Antioquia. Also, right now, for example, because Petro did something about the minority. Uh, mining. Mining, yes, exactly. So people want to <laughs> separate all again. But that is a, a perspective that want to say that you must know about the region. They are very proud of Antioquia, Paisas, the personality, the, the accent is very uh, strong, for example. And the beautiful woman, of course, uh, even in Colombia, they, they are famous for for that. So, so yeah, it's very different. And also in all regions, there is a regionalism, o sea, regionalismo, mm. o sea, como, exactly, uh, como cierta diferencia en o sea, cierto como recelo, como odio, de alguna manera, como rivalidad en la palabra. Uh -huh. Yes. For example, paisas versus rolos from Bogotá, because they have a metro and, and rolos not, and the Bogotá city is chaotic, and paisa is more like nature, more kind people, kinder. So... Uh -huh. So yes, it's a uh, rivalidad, but I must to say that uh, all that, all of that, is in is not very big deal, I think, because for example, I live uh, in Bogota mainly in in, in mis años, and mm -hmm. people receive me very well, so so. I, I went to Medellín and people is very kind to me. I don't know that uh, el regionalismo is more like a social media thing, but in reality is very different. I don't see, I don't have a, any problem with that. So, so yes, the personalities also change uh, por el clima because the weather, the costeños are very happy, very, I don't know, mm -hmm. noisy. Yes, noisy is the word. <laughs> they they sure. put the music, the pickup, the champeta music, vallenato. They are very happy. They are very, yes. It's, it's crazy. Right now it's crazy. In, in that, uh, in this uh, 
time, for example, in January, this grace. But for example, paisas are also kindly and they have that spirit of uh, move forward, forward to life and everything. And rollos, they are more introverted, I think, because the weather, I don't know, they are cold, <laughs> literally, but they are good people. So that's mainly the big dif difference. I want to say also the Boyacá region, the Pacific region. Mm -hmm. Colombia is the es la unión de muchos países. Es, es muy diferente. Pero, o sea, es maravilloso igual. ¿sabes? La gente se lleva bien igual. Eso es lo que creo. Mm -hmm. The people get along. Yes, exactly. Get along with that. And one interesting thing you mentioned was that the the Paisas people from Medellin are the most entrepreneurial in the country. Yes, yes I think they are famous for for that it's historically. Well, for for example, since I was a kid, uh, uh, I don't know. My parents always told me that they are mm -hmm. very I don't know negociantes. No sé cómo decirlo como. Yeah, okay. business people. I've I've heard this as well. I I've heard this yes. too, that they're known to be more entrepreneurial. Yes, exactly. Good sellers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So great. Ah, I want to say, for example, in, in girls, uh, I don't know the the women from uh, Santa Marta, Barranquilla, they are very. The personality is so different from Paisa or, or Rolas. They are very, I don't know, uh, they have a lot of energy, is the, is the word, a lot of energy. For example, is if, if foreigners want to know some woman in Colombia or the women from Caribbean coast are very different. They are so happy, so full of energy. They want to dance to, I don't know, they love dance here in Santa Marta. Mm -hmm. Really like the paisa. I think uh, is more like a, more like a restaurant uh, for Instagram, or it's more like uh, for chilling. I think for gambling, for nature, mm -hmm. and rollas. Well, rollas. Uh, they know. They love rock, for example. I know that because I live there. People in Bogota love uh, rock music. It's not, a, o sea, no les gusta, creo yo, mucho bailar. Aunque bueno, como Bogotá, yo soy costeño, yeah. exactly. Como yo soy costeño, como que, digamos, las mujeres sí querían bailar, pero porque yo era costeño, sí. Pero Sí, es, es como diferente. Pero las costeñas sí son, o sea, muy diferentes en cuanto a, no sé, a divertirse, por ejemplo. Tienen mucha energía. If you want to know somebody, eh, I think I must recommend eh, Carnaval de Barranquilla. Mm. You need to go there. And with one carnival, you know everything about the culture. For example, so that's great plan for you if you want. Mm. Yeah. Hey guys, quick break from the podcast to tell you about job stacking. If you're a remote or hybrid worker looking to maximize your earning potential, then Rolf Holtza, author of Job Stacking, guarantees you'll be able to double your income by implementing his paycheck multiplication layering method. This is the exact system. Rolf has used to take his own income and those of many others beyond 20K a month. With this method, Rolf contractually guarantees that you'll be able to double your income in 45 days. So if you're interested in unleashing your earning potential and doubling your income, then click the link in the description and book a call with Rolf right now. Yes. So do you think, and this is one thing I wanted to get your opinion on is, do you think that it is sort of coast versus mountains 
And I guess, you know, there's the Amazon, but there's not really that many people there. Is it really coast versus the mountains? Or is it really that every kind of city is its own thing? Or could you large, like, because I feel like the Caribbean and the coast, there's a lot of similarities across the whole coast. And then with the mountains, there's a lot of similarities with all the cultures in the mountains. Would you agree with that? Or do you think that like it's more more complicated than that? I think it's more complicated than that because it's more like a, a coast and Medellin <laughs> versus Bogota, I think. Be, here in Colombia, nobody likes uh, Bogota, for example. But I know, for example, the, the coast and Paisas uh, work together, for example, or I know one uh, un dato curioso, for example. Here in, in, in the coast, all of, uh, I don't know how to say that, tenderos, do you know the word? Tenderos? Tenderos, I do not know that word. It's like, a, well, do you know tiendas? Las tiendas yeah, like Colombia. a store. A store, yes, but a little store. It's like, like a, a store owner? Exactly, in, in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. People don't go to supermarket, but go to... La tienda, right? Uh -huh. the, from the neighborhood. That yeah. Yes, exactly. That tienda in, in the coast in, in Colombia, eh, un paisa es dueño de la tienda generalmente. Un cachaco. I don't mm. know why, <laughs> but always. In, on the coast. On the coast, yes. On the exactly. coast, it's a paisa. It's a paisa owner of, of la tienda. Like Interesting. A, Interesting, yes. I don't know why, for example, but always is a paisa. It's not a costeño. It's just, yes, I don't know. But uh, I want to say that because there is a great feeling, I don't know, in that. But all of all of people, even from costeños or paisas, they all hate eh, Bogotá or Rolos, maybe. Hate... Eh, o sea, entre comillas, ¿no? It's not like a real hate, but it's the, the, the difference are more... The, o sea, la rivalidad es un poco más seria. Los, o sea, entre el resto de países, de ciudades, mejor dicho, we are, we are good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's common in a lot of countries where it's like, you know, in the U.S., everyone hates New Yorkers kind of thing. Uh, exactly, exactly. Here is with uh, Rolos from, from Bogotá. Yeah, But I think that's pretty common. The people from Bogotá is kind. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's like more, it's more overrated than it really is, or it's exactly. more accentuated than it really is, just basically just for fun, right? Yes, exactly. Because the capital or centralism. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, but yes. Huh. Yes. Okay. Because I kind of thought it was like, You know, you look at there are some maps of the regions of Colombia, and sometimes they split it up into five regions: the Caribe, the Andes, the uh -huh. Pacifico, the Orinoquia, which is like near Venezuela, and then Amazonia. Uh -huh. And so, I'm not sure if to me that sort of lines up with cultural regions as well, where the the Pacific kind of has its own culture; it's more African. The exactly. Caribbean's pretty similar. And then the whole Andes, it, like the Cultura Andina, is like all pretty similar. Like all these little departments are all pretty similar, wouldn't you say? Where you have, you know, like Santander and um, exactly. things like that. Like that's all kind of like Cultura Andina, right? Like the Andes culture. Yes, exactly. But uh, even with that culture, it's very different. In Colombia, <laughs> okay, it's, it's like a, I don't know. Colombia is, is like a one country with different countries. I, I don't know. Is, but it's mm -hmm. different even with that in Andean region. Mm -hmm. Or Orinoquia is like uh, yes, what what you say is true. It's very similar to Venezuela, even with music. I don't know. Here, for example, Joropo is is listened also in in Venezuela. The el tema con las arepas also the, there is a, a lot of similarities but Andean people is very different people from Boyacá 
from Santander, from Antioquia. They are very different. Boyacá is more like a, a real introvert people, but work harder. There are there are farmers. They they are farmers. So these people like uh, never have a conflict. I think with nobody. You know, that that people works. Mm -hmm. They they have uh, his music, uh, Carranga music, is different from from the music uh, from Antioquia, from Musica Colombiana, the Santander. I don't mm -hmm. know. They, they are not uh, similar. I must say, for example, uh, in Santander, there is a, a ascendencia, no sé, alemana. M muchos alemanes como que vivieron históricamente en Santander. Mm. So, de, de pronto por eso, digamos que la cultura también es como tan diferente. I must say also, de, de las montañas, digamos, Colombia es un país de montaña, ¿no? Las montañas ciertamente como que dividen, o sea, aíslan cada, right. cada, cada región una de la otra, incluso si son montañas compartidas. Entonces, siento también que eso de alguna manera como que... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, so he's saying that like, because the country is so mountainous, that helps maintain the regional differences because exactly. it's not that easy to get around the country. Um, as you know, like the bus rides are crazy, right? In Colombia, like <laughs> like crazy turns in the mountains. You're like, oh, I'm never taking the bus again. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. La, la, aparte de la infraestructura, nunca estuvo, o sea, nunca... Nunca hubo una conexión real entre Colombia, tal cual. Las carreteras hasta hace poco mm -hmm. vieron, y no se han unido bien, de hecho. It's new, right? The highways are pretty new that exactly. are connecting the regions. Exactly, ajá. Uh -huh. So, de pronto por eso las diferencias son más acentuadas. No es un país como conectado realmente, tal cual, como, o sea, en su mm. infraestructura. Se, se notan mucho más las diferencias, o sea, no es tan fácil. Hasta hace poco yo creo que la gente podía viajar, o, también hay que decir eso, because the guerrilla and that uh, drug trafficking in, in 19, 19s. So, mm -hmm. Pablo Escobar era, for example, people, la gente no viajaba por carretera. Entonces, tal vez, o siento yo, o sea, se me acaba de ocurrir, creo que eso ha marcado las diferencias en las regiones. Es un país como, como si fuera nuevo, tal cual ahora, hasta ahora como que nos estamos conociendo. Antes no podíamos ni siquiera viajar o sea debo decir eso entonces yeah. sí. you, you know a lot of uh, digital nomads and travelers ask me what's the best way to get around the country should i rent a car should i take the bus and i typically say you should fly like if you're in medellin or bogota do not try to take the bus to the coast Uy, you no. should fly to the coast right would you agree with that yes i agree with that yes i know for example one friend uh, from twitter that because he lives here from, I don't know, since four years ago, I think. He lives here and he knows the country, right? So he can do uh, with car, uh, pueblos, recorrer, con, ¿sí? con rent a car and go to the pueblos. Yeah. Because he knows, he, he speaks Spanish very well. So, so yes, but if you are a principiante it's better that you travel with, with fly and know each city and yes get around to the culture and also no dar papaya is like a lema so aprende un poco y ya después si por carro rent a car if you want to go to Boyacá or maybe if you fly to to Eje Cafetero Pereira It's good to rent a car because you know Armenia, you know yes, Cali mm -hmm. is near. Mm -hmm. But if you go to from Bogota to Santa Marta, it's better to take a flight. Yeah, that's it's very far. So far, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, you know, I have, a, I have a question for you then. Do you think, you know, Colombia has a lot of really beautiful small towns where they're very char characteristic, especially yes. in the mountains where... They have um, the church and the plaza and the town square. 
and um, and the the jeeps. Uh, I forget what they call them. What do they call the jeeps in Colombia? Uh, wheelies. The wheelies. 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 Yes, exactly. And it's all very characteristic. Would would someone have to take precautions if they were visiting lots of small towns, or are the small towns typically welcoming to foreigners, or are they closed off to foreigners? What do you What do you think? Oh, I think that uh, it's very safe. It's great even because the people from small towns, they don't ask for expensive uh, or they don't try to scam you. They they are very honest people. And mm-hmm. there are not, a, I don't know how to say, hustler in Cartagena is not like that. <laughs> yes, you can be a, a really, I don't know, good, uh, you can do a really good uh, tourism with the small towns. For example, small towns. For example, Villa de Leyva is good, but it's expensive right now because it's so popular. Mm-hmm. But uh, Jardín de Antioquia, for example, Barichara is the best town uh, from Colombia, the, the most beautiful town. Mm, that's in what? Santander? Yes, in Santander, yes. Santander is really great, for example, for extreme, uh, I don't know, uh, sports. Extreme sports, extreme sports and yes, nature and, and stuff. Exactly. Huh? Barichara is the best town, I think, in Colombia. And it's- so speaking of recommendations, let's let's do that a bit. Let's give people some recommendations they might not be familiar with. Um, okay. What, like, in your opinion, what do you think are the most underrated? Let's start with like larger regions, and then maybe we'll name some cities. So we'll we'll bounce around a bit. But what do you think are the most underrated regions, or what do they call them? Provincias, departamentos. Uh-huh. In Colombia, do you yeah. think it's Boyacá? Do you think it's Santander? Is it Eje Cafetero? Like, where do you think, in your opinion, there should be more tourism, or where would you sort of recommend uh, people go? Okay, I recommend people go to Santander definitely. Even uh, Bucaramanga is the capital, but all Santander is really good. There are not so many foreigners or even tourism, I think. Uh, the food is wonderful. There is a lot of meat. Carne a la llanera, carne, mejor dicho, pe- pe- pepitoria is all about typical there. Uh, it's great for nature. It's cheap. It, the women are really beautiful because what I, what I say to you is it, like a... I don't know European. what happened, but exactly European uh, from Germany. I, I don't know in, in that region. So the the women are different. Uh, they are known uh, for being I don't know how to say, como con character, como I don't know. Yeah, like strong personalities. A strong personalities, yes. My my mom is from there, <laughs> so I know the the region. So it's great. It's cheap. Um, they have mountains and also I want to recommend uh, Boyacá definitely I recently go to to Boyacá to Mongui uh, Chiquinquirá, Tunja Duitama, Sogamoso Mm -hmm. a lot of uh, towns there and there is very quiet and of course I want to say Antioquia is, is great for nature Yes, but that uh, three regions are the best for for towns, pueblitos. Uh, there, there are not so so many tourists because, for example, in in, in the coast, los pueblos uh, no son buenos. Mm-hmm. O sea, en la costa, no. Like no. on the coast, the little towns aren't that great. It's kind of just like poor and a exactly. big ghetto. Yes, but in but in the mountains, they're really cool. Yes, exactly. In the coast, uh, they are really poor, poor, and they don't have even I don't know electricity. Maybe there is different. Yes, sadly, but this is the truth. And and the mountains are great. Santander, Boyacá, Antioquia is definitely great. Great for for travel. Yes. Santander, Boyacá, Antioquia. Yes, cool. Santander because nobody 
go there, I think. Most people eh, debería ir. Mm. Yes. Deberían ir allá. Hey guys, quick break from the episode to tell you about BitRefill. BitRefill allows you to shop online and in person without banks, converting your crypto directly into merchant balance. We're talking gift cards to Nike, Amazon, Apple, Airbnb, Hotels.com, and many more, all paid for with crypto. BitRefill offers more than 10,000 gift card options in 180 countries all across Latin America, including Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, El Salvador, and many more. You can also apply the code MYLATINLIFE at checkout to get 10% back on your first purchase. Go to bitrefill.com for more information. Cool. Yeah, I think Sean Hall on Twitter, previous podcast guest, maybe you've Connected with him a bit. I yes. think he spends his time in Boyoka. Okay, great. Yes. Do you know what cities or towns? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think like his girlfriend that he was seeing at the time was from a small town like near the lake, near... Okay. Um, uh, Laguna de Tota, something Le Tota, like that. yes. Like yes. So Sogamoso. I think he was Sogamoso. spending time in Sogamoso. It's great, definitely. Yes. It's like, a, I don't know, you you don't take a cautions. I don't know. Yes, you can be there and be quiet. It's not like a Latam team, right? It's different. You mm. can be, be very, I don't know. Tranquilo, sin preocupaciones. Nadie te va a hacer nada. It's different vibe. Mm. Yes. It's different. I, I think if I was going to be a Colombia guy, uh -huh. I would completely skip Antioquia and I would choose Santander or Boyacá to, to base up. Yes. Um, I, think, I think that's what I would do. Um, something tells me I, I like... Santander is, is more the way to go, actually, but I think both work. But I think that that's what I would do, is I would completely skip Antioquia, I'd completely skip, maybe even skip the Eje Cafetero. I mean, I guess that's cool, too. But this is, what's cool about this is, that, yeah, there's just way less gringos, way less crime and stuff. And exactly. uh, it's just as beautiful, less expensive. And I don't know, it just has, there, there's something cool about it, for sure. Yes, I, w I went to, to there, to Boyacá, a few dia days ago. And for example, I, I went with a friend from Canada, from Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And they love Boyacá. My, my friend loves Boyacá. And also love the, the vibe of the people, the campesinos. It's not like, like in, in other countries, I think, and... And in Colombia, even uh, the people want to to scam you, right? To 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 ask for more money than you pay for the same service, something like that. But in Boyacá, is different. The people don't care that. <laughs> I don't know, but it's well, true. Why? So let me ask you then: Why do you think Col Colombia is so scammy? What, I what think is it about the culture that makes people a bit more scammy oriented yes i think that is mainly because uh, for example people live a uh, day by day i think that mentality because for example here in santa marta i know people that work uh, with buildings with i don't know how to say obreros i don't know yeah construction yeah. workers construction workers yes and they they work hard all day and in that same day they spend all the money that <laughs> receive so people it's like a custom that people always think in day by day so for that reason if they knew some gringo today <laughs> they want all the money today right for is is that uh, simple it's a like culture thing but mm -hmm. of course it's a bad thing because if you for example treat very well to gringos for example they they are going to pay you even more for your service even way more but people always think uh, today day by day 
there is a, a lot of informality, for example, I must to say that there are not so many jobs, I think. So for that reason, people always think in that, in scamming and receive more today and don't care for the future. And they don't know how to build relationships or business relationship in long term. So I think it's mainly for that. It's a culture thing, but I don't know why, for example, in Boyacá is not that happen. O sea, there are not, eh, ellos no son, o sea, no les importa. Incluso porque the scamming thing is even between Colombians. For example, costeños always yeah. try to rob uh, rolos, people from Bogotá <laughs> or from Medellín and, Medell and paisas always try, try to rob people. Yes, but even between Colombians, it's, it's a thing. It's not a problem that, it's not a gringo problem. Even here in Cartagena, Always they, they want to rob the people from Bogota. <laughs> I don't know. They, they, le venden un pargo rojo en... Sí, o sea, carísimo. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a... Because they know the accent is different. They are not from here. And yes, all the bullshit, right? But uh, in Boyacá, no hay ese problema. It's really good to there, go there. Mm -hmm. No te van a robar, no te van a... A drogar tampoco, ¿no? Puede ser gringo. Te van a o sea, porque lo vi. Because I went with my friend from Canada. And they speak in English. And they don't, they, I don't know. The price is the same. <laughs> so it's a good That's thing. Good. And I want to say that I must to recommend Boyacá for that. It's because it's safe. It's good. It's beautiful. So it's cheap. It's great. I'm sure a lot of people are uh, Googling Boyoka during this podcast. <laughs> yes, they, they must do it. <laughs> yes. And if I had to dig a little bit deeper, why do you think some Colombians are, are such short-term th thinkers? Like, where does this cultural phenomenon of short-term thinking come from? Why don't they, why don't they save money? Why don't they think long-term? I think that uh, they believe that the one way to to build a I don't know business or money to make great money is like a, a politician thing. It's like all the politicians. O sea, they don't know people doing business. They all see politicians that rough uh, I don't know huge amount of money, and people even people hate that. But they want to do the same. Also, I must to say, it's a, a little bit impopular, but with Pablo Escobar thing, of course, the, there is a, an antecedent, right? That the guy that uh, do or that make a lot of money was Pablo Escobar. Uh, how was that, right? <laughs> so the people intrinsically uh, think or believe that if you, wa if you want to make a lot of money or if you have a lot of money is because you do something bad. I, I must to say that because there are not so great examples of people that uh, work harder and build great business and have more money. So people always yeah. see the bad guy that has a lot of money, have a lot of money. So maybe yeah. that mentality is from there because we don't know. We always know uh, Pablo Escobar and narcos or politicians that le roban a la gente, al pueblo. So yo creo que la gente dice la mejor forma de hacer dinero es haciendo lo que ellos hicieron. O si tú tienes mucho dinero es porque estás haciendo algo malo. Es como que no hay una realidad de que se pueda hacer dinero de una forma correcta. Como la americana, por ejemplo. O sea, y eso también va de mi parte, digamos. Yo, gran parte de mi mentalidad, de la cuenta y de todo lo que he hecho es por, porque, digamos, estoy muy involucrado en Twitter, pero en Twitter eh, americano, ¿sí? No, no el de acá, casi. Uh -huh. Entonces, eso también so, ha sort ayudado. of learning, learning different mindsets exactly. on, on Twitter. Exactly. That mindset uh, from American Dream, from build a strong relationship with people, in, uh, thinking long term, is from 
from the people from Canada and from the United States. In my case, for example, I I never travel to to there, but I must say the the truth because for that thing I I I think that I, o sea, yo creo que pienso diferente mm -hmm. por esto porque estoy como que, o sea, yo creo que es posible hacer plata honestamente, pero mucha gente no lo cree acá, o sea. Mm -hmm. No creen que sea posible, pero yo sí lo he visto posible. O sea, entonces eso. Yo creo que for that reason it's a good thing that uh, gringos go to Colombia. <laughs> yes, of course. O sea, for in my in my case, for example, because I learn a lot of with them. This episode of the My Latin Life podcast is brought to you in part by Job Stacking. Introducing Rolf Holtz's Paycheck Multiplication Layering Method, a revolutionary approach that redefines the traditional career path. This is Rolf's new Done With You program where he'll work with you to implement job stacking for yourself. With this method, Rolf contractually guarantees that you'll be able to double your income in 45 days. So, are you ready to step out of the shadows of job insecurity and step into a world of career abundance? Then just click the link in the description of this episode, book a call with Rolf, and start walking the path of unleashing your earning potential with job stacking. Uh, no, it makes sense. It makes yes, sense. Exactly. For me, we can, we can help teach the Latinos a bit more long term thinking. Uh, exactly. So, building business, right? Learning skills. Even talking with people, I talk uh, with a lot of guys from Twitter, a lot from every from every business I think, from Esmeralda, from even marijuana uh, medicinal, uh, I don't know uh, stocks, a lot. Mm -hmm. I learn a lot with with that. Uh, that's the great thing about Twitter account, the connections. Mm -hmm. it's, It's a really a great opportunity to me to learn a lot with uh, people that is not so common to know in Colombia because the rich guy in Colombia, I never have uh, access to them, for example, for, for even to speak or anything. But uh, with my Twitter account, yes, I have the access to great guys that want to live here. Or, or for example, yo, yo conocí a un, a un hombre de Luxemburgo, un tipo. Él vive en Colombia. Eh, él no tiene residencia ni nada. Él solo entra de turismo y se va. Uh -huh. Seis meses. Eh, pero tiene apartamento acá. Y él, digamos que es una gran influencia para mí. O sea, estoy muy agradecido. No necesariamente es que yo esté buscando hacer negocios o algo así. Pero el solo hecho de compartir tiempo con él, como que uno va aprendiendo cosas sin darse cuenta. O sea, es una oportunidad o sea, yo siento que that's the great thing about uh, gringos go to Colombia of course there are uh, some bad apples of course always here also and gringos also they do. but the great majority is a good people I, I must say that yes cool that's awesome yes man It's true. Uh, there was one question. This is totally random, but I wanted to get to it because I'm kind of curious. They they were talking about cohabitation laws in Colombia. And if you live with a partner, a girlfriend, a boyfriend for two years, then you are technically married. Do you know anything about that? Yes, that's true. Yes, cohabitation. But... Uh... If you if you have a uh, properties and also right, but for example in, in Colombia, you you can marry the the girl or or you can live with the girls at least two years, but I don't know what happen if you don't own nothing here, or if your properties are foreign. I don't know that thing, but but yes, technically you are married. Yes, it's like a Unión Libre, ya. Dos mm -hmm. años solamente. So you need to, I don't know, if you want to live with girls, you need to know that. In two years, practically, practically is your wife. Here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See? 
And for people that do want to live in Colombia, what what advice would you have for them in terms of adapting properly, in terms of uh, being successful in Colombia as someone from the U.S. or Canada? Oh, great. Well, the first thing that uh, lo que yo haría is like uh, go to what you say. Go to the safe area, the really safe area. Boyacá, mm. Santander. I go there. I work or do my thing in digital nomad or something like that. I learn Spanish also with some, I don't know, girl or friend or somebody uh, here. I think that you don't need really a maybe academic thing or teacher thing. It, it could be useful if you don't know anything in English. Mm -hmm. But if you are here, it's better that you practice with local locals. Um, I go to Santander, Boyacá, work on my thing. And later, with more experience, I travel to Medellín, to Bogotá, to Santa Marta. Because if you go there directly, could be, oh, I want to say, amazing experience. For example, if you go your first time to Medellin, it's like, a, I don't know, another world. It's, it's so different, so great. That could be dangerous because you, o sea, piensas que, que es muy maravilloso. O sea, te confías, es el problema, siento yo. Porque claro, uh -huh. llegas a un lugar nuevo, entonces todo es muy maravilloso y como que ya bajas la guardia y ahí es donde te pasan los problemas. Yo siento que es it's better that you go to safe area, Bucaramanga, that is beautiful, and know a little bit, and later, with more experience, go to all regions. Because I think it's very important that you think like Colombian guy when you are here. Uh, for, for example, for avoid the uh, scopolamine thing or, or mm -hmm. see qué persona te puede robar. O sea, uno como que va adquiriendo la... It's like a malicia indígena, right? It's, it's like a, the mentality that Colombian has that see something wrong. Gringos don't see no, nothing wrong. <laughs> yes, they don't see the signals, I think. But if you live here a little bit, two months in that region, in Boyacá and Santander, you know the culture, you you learn to to read the people and all of that could be great. Because, for example, I have uh, that friend from Luxembourg mm -hmm. and that guy is amazing. The, uh, that guy even is even happy because... People uh, is scared that Colombia is dangerous, for example. But he's actually happy because of that, because, I don't know, él piensa mejor para mí, ¿sí? Como que yo puedo vivir aquí. But it's because he has a lot of experience, right? With the... He's like a Colombian, yes. I know, for example, uh, James, James Newell, you know? Yep. Yes. He, for example, he even speak like a paisa. O sea, he speak Spanish, but yeah, not He has so. a good accent. Yes, exactly. He even looks like uh, from here, from Medellin. So that's really great. So that guy, for example, is an example that you can live very well here also. But if you take, a, o sea, if you take time to decide to know the country, to know the culture, to know the people. It's a lot of time, I think. That's the, maybe the bad thing of Colombia, is that you need a little bit time to, to know very well and como saber cómo cuidarte. O sea, no es como que tú llegues de una vez y te sientas súper seguro y ya. Yo siento que acá es un proceso en el que tú tienes que ir aprendiendo poco a poco. Uh -huh a pensar como un colombiano y una vez ya pienses como un colombiano que no creo que se demore mucho yo creo que en seis meses 
tú ya como que aprendes a identificar todo lo que puede ser un peligro. Pero no es como un país donde uno llega y uno ya puede estar súper... ¿Cómo? No sé. Argentina es muy seguro, me dicen, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Yo fui a México y me pareció muy seguro. O sea, yo siento que uno... Pero bueno, también es que yo soy latino. No sé si... Uh -huh. Eso también es una diferencia. Uh, basically, like, there is a lot of subtleties of the street smarts exactly. that, you'll, that you'll pick up over time in Colombia. And um, that's kind of how it can be a little bit dangerous for digital nomads is they just haven't picked up a couple of those street smarts things exactly. quite yet. So it, it does take a little bit of time. I'll tell you one um, that... For me, I, I wasn't used to street dogs, like d like dogs that live in the street that don't have an owner uh -huh. and how they're, they're more aggressive. And someone taught me that what you should do is you should pretend you have like a rock, like that you're throwing a rock at them. Exactly. And then, and then like they'll go away. But me, like where I grew up, we didn't have street dogs. So I didn't know that I had to like pretend to throw a rock at the dog to make it to make it scared type of thing. So you learn these little things, right? Yes, exactly. You learn that in that way. For example, here, one time I feel in danger in Santa Marta. I don't know. I, I run to the Siruma. I don't know if you know. Rodadero, maybe. Okay. Uh, hay un sendero. So I run that way. But uh -huh. it was a little bit late. And, and I have a necklace, necklace, I don't know, gold, uh -huh. yes, una cadena de oro, and see one guy, maybe, I don't know, a smart thing, a smart street thing, <laughs> so I, I act like, a, I don't know, like if I have something, a, a knife, yes, <laughs> literally, but I don't have anything, so it's like a, un método de disuasión, right, uh -huh. so, Nothing happened, but you, it's similar to what you say. So you like, uh, act like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> como si estuvieras como precavido, como dispuesto a hacer algo, ¿sí? Eso también mm -hmm. sirve. Or, for example, in Bogotá, if you <laughs> has the, have the clothes the, that people, that thief people use, <laughs> like a rapper thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think nobody do something to you, for example. Mm. Yes, with the, with the clothes, with the urban theme. Mm -hmm. This episode of the My Latin Life podcast is brought to you in part by BitRefill. BitRefill is the best way to spend your crypto in Latin America. Purchase gift cards or mobile refills from more than 3,500 brands in 186 countries instantly, safely, and privately. Visit bitrefill.com for more information. Yes. I, I think a lot of people would be intimidated to go to a tier B city, uh, some other city. Like everyone's pretty focused on going to Medellin or on going to the coast. Would you still say that you can do it? Uh, you just got to take more precautions or it's kind of crazy. Like Medellin, like it, it feels safe, but also like crazy stuff happens. Yes, I agree with that. Medellín, I don't know. If you go to Medellín, you are going to love love it, right? Even the people that, that are listening to this podcast uh, always want to love it, but could be uh, dangerous. When you yeah. are the, in the safe thing, o sea, cuando estás de lo más seguro, es cuando algo malo parece que pasa en Medellín ahora mismo. Mm. Maybe with the new mayor, uh, the team improve a lot. I think, I hope that because Medellin is like a, the the big city in Latam, I think, with with Mexico City and mm. with Buenos Aires. But Medellin is the top from Colombia. I think the the most known. The people love it. I don't know. So we need uh, definitely do that do something about that because that thing is not so common. O sea, for example, uh -huh. I don't know, in, in 10 years ago, o sea, no, no era tan ocurrente el, el homicidio right. al extranjero o los robos, las o sea, I don't know what is happening there, but 
I must to say it's safe right now. O sea, si no fuera seguro, eh, I would be the, the first guy that say it, right? But right now, I think it's safe. Maybe, I don't know, Christmas thing, eh, the, the, los ladrones ¿sí? querían Ajá. robar, tal vez para la época, para hacer su Navidad. de enero. <laughs> <laughs> Exacto. Exactamente, sí. For, for teen, I don't know, they, they, the crimes. Are, yeah. But maybe, yes, it's, it's weird, right? Medellín is no, great. Man. Yeah, I, I mean, it does seem like the, there's a new mayor in Cartagena, and they're, and they're starting to clean up Cartagena. Uh -huh. uh, there's yes. been a lot of changes in Santa Marta recently as well, where they built the new boardwalk um, and have been improving the infrastructure there a little bit. Um, so it does. There, there, there are some positive signs at the local level. Obviously, Petro at the national level, not great. But okay. at the local level... The, the cities seem to be improving. Exactly. Yes. Because a lot of mayors are from right wing, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and we see what happened with that. Ah, I must to say, uh, Petro, I don't know, Petro, when he started, uh, all things uh, were bad here. For example, the the stocks and all of that. But in this year, for example, the, the stocks and the La Bolsa de Valores de Colombia is great. I think that people uh, don't believe that he can do a lot what he thinks, for example, from, I don't know, socialism and all of that. Mm. The Petro really, uh, he, o sea, no ha hecho nada por, por el momento, ¿sí? No mm. ha hecho nada así como contundente, no ha podido pasar ninguna reforma. Pero eso al mismo tiempo ha sido un problema porque no ha hecho nada con el crimen. O sea, no ha hecho, no ha hecho may mayor cosa que ha empeorado, naturalmente. Pero siento que la, el mercado y... People don't believe. O sea, no, no cree que él pueda hacer muchas cosas. Entonces, como que eso ha mejorado la economía de alguna forma. Irónicamente, ¿sí? <laughs> sí. Oh, that's good. Well, I know uh, we don't have too much time left, Mr. Bowtide Columbia. Um, I do want to do a Columbia Roundtable episode in the future. We'll get you on. We'll get James no Nuveen. Oh, great. Um, a, a bunch of other people, uh, a bunch of other Columbia people, and we'll have a good episode. James did have a question for you, which I'll ask you as kind of like the last question. Um, if you had to live in another LATAM country, Other than Colombia, what other country would you want to well, live in? Well, I want to live, I must say that. Well, in this year, I hope uh, I go to Buenos Aires, but I didn't know, o sea, no lo conozco todavía. But I definitely, I will go to Mexico. Mexico City, mainly. Mm. I love Mexico. Mexico is very similar to Colombia. I don't know. This is like a, my nature. O sea, I feel at home in Mexico. The people, the food is amazing. I feel safe. I don't know, but in the streets, I, I think I feel that uh, a lot of silence. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. But when I walk uh, to Mexico City, I feel like... Like, uh, I don't know, very quiet city. I don't know. I know that it's a little bit chaotic, but I feel that way. I don't know why. But Mexico, definitely because the the weather, the culture, um, the food. I feel safe there. I must to say that. I don't like uh, Cancun because Cancun is like a... I don't know, American city. Yeah, it's I think. too touristic. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's, it's like American. It's not like a Latin. It's so. Okay. It's like a Cartagena. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But Mexico City, definitely, I I will be there. The food is amazing in Mexico, for example. Cool. Um, and it's cheap. So, yes. 
even for me. Mexico's for, good. For me. Mexico's good. So yeah. um, uh, we'll, we'll obviously link your Twitter and your Substack in the show notes. But how about you take this time and uh, if you have any call to action, if you have any message that you would like to share with the audience, uh, now's, now's the time. Okay. I want to say I, I want to create a, <laughs> a little bit a, a community, of course, with you and all of people. But I want to build a, a relationship with a great people from all of the world. And I want to go to Latin because I think there is a great opportunity to build great things. I want to to do business uh, with a lot of people. I am open to do that and help uh, if I can, when whatever you need, you can contact me. And if you want to learn, for example, Spanish, if you want to build a medical tourism in Colombia, for example, if you want mm. to to I don't know to create a or to build a farm in Colombia, anything, whatever you need. Uh, I think there is a great opportunities in, in countries that are in crisis and Colombia always <laughs> are in crisis. So, so yo creo que hay oportunidades para todos y creo que si combinamos las personas extranjeras con los locales, yo siento que se pueden construir grandes cosas y tú lo has hecho muy bien. O sea, Tú lo estás haciendo, de hecho. Gracias a ti, incluso, por, por hacer o tratar de construir esa, esa comunidad. Y sí, estoy abierto, digamos, para los negocios o para lo que sea que necesiten acá. Bienvenidos en lo que yo les pueda ayudar y siempre pues, voy a tratar de decir la verdad en lo, que, en lo que pueda. Entonces, muchas gracias igual por tenerme en cuenta y, y nada, seguimos hablando. Cool, man. Awesome. Hey, by the way, are you rum or aguardiente? What do you prefer? Oh, aguardiente, man. But... You're aguardiente. Yeah, costeños are rum, <laughs> maybe. But I, I love aguardiente, man. Yes. Interesting. I had a feeling. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, well, I, I hope uh, we can have a couple of waros uh, some yeah. point, sometime in the future. Yes, um, well, this has been another episode of the My Latin Life podcast. Again, my guest today, Bowtie Columbia. Thank you to Mr. Bowtie Columbia and thank you to the audience for listening. Thank you, hermano. Estamos hablando. Gracias por todo.